What's up, everybody? I am here with another wonderful guest on the Military Millionaire Podcast. This is Matt Amabile. He is coming to us live today from his room because he's awesome. And I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, so hey, Matt is a stud. He and I met briefly in Tahoe, but we were all over the place and didn't really get to hang out and talk there. And we've gotten to hang out and talk a little bit online and got to hang out on his podcast about two weeks ago, hit it off, finally got to talk for a little while. And I, I really like this dude. He's got such a cool story because he started out at a young age doing the whole corporate thing at 25 jump, or, or at 23, jumping into real estate. And by 25, he had 22 doors and he had left corporate. He had started traveling the world. He had 7,000 a month in passive income. And he was like, deuces, I'm out. And then like so many of us do, uh, deuces, I'm out, turned into what's next. And now he's crushing it with the Financial Freedom Fest podcast and just living it up with mentorship and coaching and more real estate and wholesaling and deals and just hanging out with cool people and uh, yoga and Costa Rica soon and just living it up. Uh, and it's just, it's just cool. You know, I like, I like hanging out with people that have just, uh, just having fun and living their life on their terms. And that's what Matt's doing. So there's my intro. It's all over the place. And Matt, welcome to the show, buddy. Dude, that intro is uh, great, man. It's humbling. I appreciate you talking about me like that, man. And and I appreciate hanging out with people like yourself, too, who know how to take life a, a little bit easier, enjoy themselves, and build up the, the life that they're trying to create from them, for themselves. So appreciate you, Dave, and uh, looking forward to digging in today wherever we end up digging in. Yeah, man, absolutely. So, okay, so you started corporate... Walk me through. How'd you get started? How'd you, how did Matt stumble into real estate and and decide that, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I guess you were in corporate. When did you realize that wasn't it? Yeah. So basically right when I got out of school is when I realized <laughs> that it wasn't it, dude. So I uh, right out of school came out with no debt. Luckily, I went into school, got full scholarships, all that whole thing. And Came out with no debt, academic scholarships, all that good stuff. And then I went on a European trip. So I went to Europe with my girlfriend at the time for around a month and a half and then started real life. You know, came back from this European trip, went to Paris, Switzerland, Greece, uh, every, Germany, all, like basically all over all over Europe, got to see a ton of stuff, have a great time. And then I come back and I am I have to work in New York area making fifty five thousand dollars a year working a sales job. I have to I don't have to, but I choose to sleep on my cousin's couch so I could save money. I'm paying my cousin four hundred dollars a month to sleep on his couch. And uh, so all that goes down and my girlfriend breaks up with me and this is my girlfriend of around a year and a half. So at this point, I'm not really making great money. I'm sleeping on my cousin's couch. My girlfriend breaks up with me in my head. I'm like, how am I going to get another girlfriend? I'm sleeping on my cousin's couch. I'm not making great money. I got to figure everything out. So uh, from there, I started looking into personal finance, man. I Googled the top personal finance books, Red Rich, Dad, Poor Dad, Millionaire, Next Door, Rental Property Investing by Brandon Turner. Found out about house hacking, went and bought a four-unit building. And from there, I, I started partnering and buying more real estate. That's kind of the short and quick, man. But I realized that the corporate lifestyle was not going to be for me. I didn't like, I didn't like having to go somewhere and realizing that every week, 50 weeks for a year, around 50 weeks for a year, somebody could tell me that I have to go somewhere because I have expenses that I need to pay in my life. So I needed to figure out how to get out of those expenses and how to be able to create some type of income that I didn't have someone telling me that you have to come in and come do this. Yeah. I love it. Where'd you buy the fourplex? Where's that at? So that's in New Jersey. It's actually where my entire portfolio is. It's in a town called Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Nice. You just, is that, were you from there or was, is it close to kind of where you were commuting? 
Yeah, so I actually, it's a funny story. I grew up here from like zero to seven years old, eight years old. And my parents moved at that time. My sister was going to high school and my parents did not want my sister to go to high school in this area because it's it, at that time, it really wasn't the best area. It's still not an amazing, amazing area, but it's much better than it was. So we moved out of the area, went to a, a different farm town, grew up by but horses and cows and and farmland all that good stuff and then uh ended up the price to rent ratio in this area when i was doing my analysis that i learned from brandon turner and all guys like that like the price to rent just made so much sense and my cash flow was going to be so stupid to move here and uh you know, I found a, a four unit building that I would be able to live in one unit, rent out the other three and make I was thinking at that time, maybe around 800 on top of getting free rent. Um, and now with how it performed, although there's a huge story of renovations and uh, nightmare contractors, it was a condemned four unit property issues with the town issues with the bank issues with everyone people breaking in all this different stuff going on. But at the end of that, now I have this four unit property where I'm actually doing this podcast from. I have a four unit property. I live in one apartment and the other apartments make me around 1800 bucks a month in, in cash flow. So it's a, a rock star property. Yeah, that sounds rad. And I mean, way better than, uh, you know, $55,000 a year in New York, which uh, I don't know that there's anywhere in the state of New York that that goes very far to my knowledge. Right. Yeah, it doesn't do much for you, especially if you're going out on the weekends and partying. Yeah, and, try to live it up at uh, 20. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, $55,000 a year doesn't go very far in, in most places Anywhere. these days. I mean, even I – mean, well, you know, I say that. That's still above the median income here in uh, southwest Missouri. But uh, mm. we also – the average or the median home price here is only like 220 222 i think so right you know but uh i think that's gonna change as people realize that over the next couple of years and go ooh, we can move there dude and and how crazy is that too right it's like affordability is the new big thing and that's why that is a big reason why i invested in this area it is a very affordable area it's one of the only areas in northwest northern new jersey that you can get a three-bedroom apartment for it, it rents for 1700 but everywhere else in north northern new jersey a three-bedroom apartment is like 2400 bucks 2500 bucks so a lot of people come here because of affordability there's a good amount of demand rolling in from people who just want to be able to buy a place that costs less than normal or live in a place that costs less than normal the average single family house here is right around your price point as well it's right around two hundred thousand dollars for a single family row home um so people are people are coming in and and i feel the same way man i think these affordable areas are just going to keep rocking and and ripping yeah i love it so okay so you bought 22 doors in two years and you mentioned partnerships mm. how did you i mean that's the fourplex, I mean, I would imagine you probably went, you go FHA? Uh, two, yeah, FHA, it's a 203K oh, loan. So, all right, walk me, so, let's, let's talk about that and then I'll get to my next question because that's not a whole lot of people have actually done that or know about that. So I'd love to hear a little bit about that process. Dude, not a whole lot of people do the 203K yeah. loan. And, and b behind the VA loan, I think the 203K loan is the most powerful loan. Uh, that is realistically out there for other people to get. So 203K loan, you can get your purchase price and your renovation coupled into one large loan. So let's say you have $150,000 purchase price and $150,000 renovation. All in, that's $300,000. You only have to pay 3.5% on the entire renovation and the, and the purchase price. Yep. So on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, there you'd be looking at ten thousand five hundred dollars down, and you'd be able to do this huge uh, renovation where you could add tons of value to the property. So my property in particular, 
uh, there was a bunch of negotiation that went on. I ended up getting this for around $140,000, put in $120,000. Um, but for me to actually close on that property, I only needed to bring, with different inspections, I had to hire a consultant, a 203K consultant, they're called. This is someone that comes in and actually helps you to create a scope of work for your renovation. And they bring that scope of work to the bank and then they help you come in and they will look at the work that contractors have done just to underwrite it, make sure that the contractors are doing work properly. Because you as a 203K, someone getting a 203K, you probably don't know how to run a renovation. Uh, so they help you out along the process. And um, yeah, so you only have to bring three and a half percent and you're you're able to do this huge value add. So I went in on this uh, 262 is my loan. It values out now at around four hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. And again, it, it cash flows a, a stupid amount because it's FHA, but it's a really good way to get in low money down and still do a big renovation, big value add. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Uh, in fact, it's even crazier. You mentioned the VA loan. They have a renovation product that almost mm. nobody knows about because it's only been around for like five or six years. And for a while, only Loan Depot had piloted it uh, as as actually funding it. And there's not a whole lot of lenders still who will play ball with it. Uh, although I know a couple of brokers. Who, who will mess with it, but it's same thing. It's, it's a, you know, a bit of a process and everything, but yeah, it'll, it'll do zero down on the whole purchase and reno. Um, and it's that's kind of crazy. Some of the stuff that it'll cover too. Uh, but you know, it's, it's not an easy thing. So it's, you know, not ideal for most people, but uh, they'll even do new right. builds with the VA loan, which is wow. Which is solid. Uh, and in fact, you can even build a, uh, you can build barn dominiums with it. <laughs> it's some kind of crazy stuff with the VA. I'm like, man, I'm going to build a barn dominium someday and just live in that thing. I'm like, can I build a, I'm like talking to my friend. I'm like, what if I build a barn dominium and then I build like a causeway and a triplex so that it's still one building. So it's a ha right. it's one house, fourplex, but it's a massive barn dominium that I live in. And then I rent the, I'm like, dude, that's a genius. I'm like, How idea, do I make man. this work so that I can live on dude. like 20 acres and have my own oh. like little, you know, <laughs> barn. Yeah. Your, your own little world that you have there <laughs> and like a, a beautiful place. I think the point of, of what we're both saying there is that like, there's some pretty powerful products out there that people can go create a pretty massive amount of, wealth and cash flow just with one property if you know about these loans and these options and the opportunities to get out there and just whatever your mind can come up with like this barn dominium triplex like whatever you can come up with as long as it can get approved by a lender and you can build the plans and make it happen then you can probably make it happen you know yeah so okay so you do the fha loan right I now you did a two hundred three k, so that's a little bit more of a task than most. But most people are familiar with like the FHA house hack. That that in itself, if you take the two hundred three out, is not a foreign concept to most. Right. But most people don't just jump from that into like partnerships and scale to you know twenty two doors in, in two years. That's a that's a pretty pretty hefty leap, pretty quick. Uh, so I'm curious, you know, you you mentioned you you moved into partnerships pretty quickly. Like what was the, like, how did you move into that mindset? How did you form some of those partnerships? I mean, were they, were they, mm. you know, how, how did, how did that kind of mold? How did that look? Yeah. So I think I've always been someone that has listened to other people and seen people that are doing things that I want to do and are in places that are in places that I want to be. And I've just followed their advice and what I was hearing at the time and hearing from bigger pockets, everybody on there is like, if you can partner with someone, it's almost like having a cheat code. If they have capital and they have the information that you need to get a deal done, they have different skills that they could bring to the table as well and knowledge, then that is like, instead of you versus someone, it's like putting both of you together. And now you're like one mega team that can go and buy even more. So like, if you get a more powerful link on the chain, then you're going to be more powerful with them. So 
I, that was kind of my mindset. Let me get together with someone who can get that stuff done. My another main thing there was like I already learned and saw that this fourplex can create some awesome cash flow and it actually works and real estate proved itself to me. And I was seeing and analyzing all these deals coming by that were just like, this would cash flow this much dollars per month. This, this would make me get me even closer to that $5,000 a month number that I was looking to get so I could go travel the world. And then, uh, but I wasn't able to buy them because I didn't have all the capital that I needed to get these deals done. And even if I did, I would be using up all my capital on one deal. So what I did is I started finding deals that actually made sense. And I started going to lenders and I wasn't going to lenders to get lending on on the property. I was going to lenders and asking them if they had anyone that they knew that would want to buy a property with someone who's a young hustler and educated and boost on the ground and ready to get this deal done, but doesn't have all the capital in his name. And lo and behold, I got connected with someone I basically put a little pitch together on this property that I had. We talked about the partnership, how it would look. And I got this person to actually agree to bring 50% of the capital to the table. I brought the other 50% of the capital, but I got 100% of the cash flow. And that's because I was finding killer deals. I've, this deal was like a $220,000 value at purchase and we were buying it for $160,000. So it's like there was already equity baked in. They yeah. were getting in for the equity ownership and for me to buy them out in the future. But that that was my first venture into partnerships. And I went on with that person to buy 11 units. And then we ended up sell over four properties. We sold two of those properties. And then I bought him out of the partnerships in the other two par properties. That's awesome. Yeah. Creating a win-win where it's like a no-brainer makes it easy or easier to you know right. pitch the partnership. You know, it's interesting because I've had I've, – I've done – a few different partnership structures and, and ventures and, and some of them have gone really well. And some of them have gone, yeah, uh, some of some of my, some of my least favorite transactions and I've had loves and hates and, you know, lessons learned and whatever. Uh, but it's, if you can find like a true, just win-win, right. Where it's like, dude, I don't, I hate that part of the deal or I'm not good at that. And the other person eats it up. Like, man, it, it just creates such an opportunity or, if, or it's like, dude, I've got this killer deal and I don't have the capital, but I got this thing I like win. Dude, th that's it, man. And I, I look at real estate. I like to say you got four parts in real estate. You've got time, knowledge, capital and the deal. And so like time, knowledge, capital deal, that only means that money, the capital is only one part of that. So if you're bringing time, knowledge and the deal, that's 75% of the deal. You're almost more valuable than the capital there. I think a lot of people put money on the pedestal. Uh, so what I try to do now is find what I call like a golden key partner. They can unlock any door, basically golden key. So time, knowledge, capital, and a deal, they bring another part of that. So they'll bring capital and they'll bring knowledge. They'll bring an ability. I don't like talking to lenders. So my first partner was actually, he was a, a a lender. He was a mortgage broker. So he could take care of all the financing. I've worked with other mortgage brokers. I've worked with property managers, guys that can manage the property. So I don't have to do any of that type of work. You know, it's, it is finding, finding someone that can take over the parts of the deal that you really don't like to do. So then you could focus on what you're good at. And, and like, if finding deals is what you're good at, then focus on finding deals and use partners that can take care of everything else or a good amount of everything else. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you wholeheartedly on the capital piece. Uh, people place a ton of weight on it because, and I think part of it's just the way we grow up, right? Money, money is this thing that, you know, oh, it doesn't grow on trees and all these, all these cliches, right? But what you realize very quickly is that if you have a good deal and you mm. talk about what you do, raising money, I mean, capital itself is just so easy to get your hands on if you've got the mm -hmm. right things. Like, uh, probably the best example of this ever is a buddy of mine needed bridge debt for 60 days to close a hotel. They had mm -hmm. the deal was going to close like in four days or six days or something crazy. And they needed a bridge $675,000 for 60 days. 
and the refi was already cleared and all this stuff, but it was just like, there was a paperwork thing and it was right. like, whatever. Right. And, uh, I was like, dude, I don't, I'll send an email. We'll see what happens. I'll see if I can help you out. Good friend. Like I trust this guy mm. with my life. Um, shot an email out within two hours. I had a text that said, give me the guy's phone number. I got it. And then by the end of the day, I had four emails. And one of those was someone who had been forwarded the email who I'd never talked to who had replied and <laughs> said he was in. And so within 24 hours, I had four or five people who said yes. And within two and a half days, it was funded. And <laughs> it was like, oh, well, that's cool. Like right. my, I'm looking at my buddy and he's like, he's like, dude, you're a stud. And I'm like, had no idea that I could I just found out I was like yeah apparently <laughs> like now I, now I'm worried about like now I just need to go find some deals I guess you know um, right but it was like you know it was mind mind blowing to me but like what I've learned is you know, between creative financing and seller financing and assumable loans and and partners and like whatever yeah the the money's usually not the thing that holds a deal up you can find that. And and I tell people in my mastermind group all the time in the war room or whatever, it's like people are like, oh, you know, I've got this deal that looks killer, but, you know, I've only ever done a uh, $800,000 deal and this one's $2 million. And I'm like, well, what do the, the numbers look like? They're like, oh, they look solid, but like, well, I don't want to go under contract if like I've never raised more than 200000 and this one's going to be six hundred. I'm like, dude, if the numbers are as good as you say and your track record shows X, Y, Z, mm. put it under contract, you'll be able to raise money. And if you can't raise the money between me and a couple of the other guys in the group will raise it for you. Like right. we, we will figure it out. Like you will get it done. And if you have to give up a percentage of that deal to make it happen by helping, having other people help you raise it, you'll be fine with that. Cause you'll have the get deal, a done. deal done. Yeah. Get a percentage of the deal. If you could get the deal done. And if money doesn't flow towards the deal, most likely it's not a deal. Bingo. You know, bingo, bango. Yeah. That's it. Dude, okay. So you get, you get your 22. Which is mm -hmm. uh, seven thousand a month ish in passive income, and you're like, "That's it, I'm out," and you go travel the world. What do you do, <laughs> dude? Actually, once once you get out of the job, especially like at my age, like I don't really have anybody influencing me or anything influencing me besides like the people I talk to, like you every every uh, week, like on my podcast. So I, I go and start a podcast. Right. But like my point of saying that whole little tangent there is like my whole world actually opened up to a crazy amount, like right after I left my job, you would think like everything gets easy, but <laughs> you drop the job and then life just comes at you. Like, this is what life actually is. You are no longer Matt, the, supply chain logistics salesman anymore and that's not how you identify you're just matt and now you have to figure out what is matt who is matt what does matt actually like to do what are his hobbies what like what is it that you're actually going to spend all of this time for the rest of your life doing and where are you going to put that so I took a, a little bit of uh, of a trip. I took around five months to travel. I went to uh, the West Coast visiting my sister. I went down. I camped in the Redwoods. Mm -hmm. I went out to Puerto Rico for a month. I learned how to surf. Um, went over to Europe. I spent a lot of time in Paris. Uh, doing yoga over there, meeting people, going out for lunch, going out for dinner, went over to Barcelona, Spain for a little bit, did some more travel over there. And, um, you know, that is really a big learning lesson as well, because what you learn when you travel is like, I am inherently the same person when I get on the plane to go fly over to Europe. I'm going to be this. I'm the same exact person when I get off that plane in Europe, which means nothing changes. Like I still need to be happy and deal with myself and become myself and figure myself out as I am over there as well. So it's like, 
it's almost like are you running away from your problems or are you running towards towards something else in the future and i think that's a a big learning lesson for me has just been i need to come into myself figure out fully who i am what i am and what i'm doing and and with that comes a lot of experimentation like trying this podcast out that i started doing and i love doing talking to guys on a weekly basis um and you know i'm still out here buying more real estate so i'm buying a five unit right now i'm buying a single family um putting deals together i'm dipping my feet into wholesaling and like really i'm just open to every single opportunity that comes my way um i'm quick to say no but there is nothing that i won't look at and just see if it's something that i want to jump into and try out yeah man i love that like just going with it you know that's go with the flow it's interesting everybody i feel like when they hit that kind of you know i think it was brandon who says like everyone who can retire early won't but like the whole getting out of like the whole like financial freedom thing it it opens the door like once you solve the money problem solve because it just creates a different levels of money Problem. problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a whole lot of just different questions you start asking yourself. And it becomes like this whole different game. And, and you're so right about the identity thing. It's like, wait a minute. Like, I'm still like my whole thing. I think we talked about it on your show is like, how do I learn to have fun again? What is this whole mm. being alive thing? Like, mm. I used to have a sports car and a motorcycle. I uh, bought a Ducati last month. <laughs> like, let me <laughs> let me go figure out what that was all about. Like, right. it's uh, you know, I I went to South America as soon as I got out of the military. Like, it's yeah, it's, but then it's like, okay, wait, I'm supposed to be able to take time. Like, I, I always joke with my friends. I've got a couple friends around town who are, you know, entrepreneurs or or financial freedom or whatever, and we always joke because we're like, I'm like, hey guys, let's go float a river. And we're like, yeah, in the middle of the week, because we have to remind ourselves that we can do that. Like everybody clear your schedule, right. like just cancel whatever. Like, let's let's take right. a day off. We have to remember that we can do this. It, it's like I forget that I can take a day off or that I can do whatever. But it's so important. Like today, I <laughs> this, this sounds I, I don't know if it sounds bad on a podcast, but I really don't care uh monday like i woke up at at 10 30 and yesterday well i was really hung over because i went out on saturday and apparently once i turned 26 hangovers last two days oh yeah um so like 30 monday monday i'm up at 10 30 yesterday tuesday i'm up at 9 30 today i got up at 9 30 again which like i was getting up at like 7 a.m for a good while but i think to the point that you were just making like let's go out on the river just because we can and just because we have this availability and this option in our life it's like i don't have things even if i had things on my schedule i really do respect the time of other people i knew in my head that i didn't have anything on my schedule i was pretty sure but even if i did i probably would have been a little bit okay with myself of just like i apologize i missed your meeting you know it, it's not like there's anything that i have to do it's like this life is whatever you want to create and like once you have the option to create it, then what do you actually want to do with your life? Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, I'm going to call him out on this. He's going to get it on the podcast. Brian, uh, he canceled on me on a uh, day that we were supposed to record a podcast. It was just a simple like, hey, sorry, something came up type, you know, whatever. And then we recorded. And at some point when we were talking, I don't remember if it was when we were recording before we recorded or if it was just a random phone call or text or something. We were chatting and he was like, basically, basically something to the extent of like, one of my guilty pleasures now is like remembering that I can cancel things. And so he's like, I'll just, you know, every now and then I'll just, if I've got something, I'm just like, Pfft. and I was laugh laughing because I don't think he had remembered that he had canceled. He canceled your podcast. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, ah, well, at least, at least I know, <laughs> you know, but, but, uh, yeah, but it was yeah. as funny as that interaction was. I think about that all the time now because I am like a, I'm like a 99 I on the disc profile. So I always felt so terrible about like, oh, my God, I got to be there. And now I'm like, 
dude, no, like I'm going to reschedule this or I'm going to cancel this. Like there is nothing wrong at all with being like, Hey, I got whatever, like, sorry, you know, like, right. and it, that's it's actually crazy free. that you're, you're a 99 I because I'm actually exactly a 99 I as well. Dude, it is. There are so many, I, <laughs> so many wonderful, terrible things that come with that. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> oh a lot gosh. of, a lot of, a lot of care, but also I think a lot of like, it's it's not a big deal guys like this is just life we're all kind of doing this thing we're all taking this uh one step at a time seeing where it takes us everybody makes mistakes there's problems how do we uh just go off of this moment what is the next best action and how do we deal with that i don't we don't take a lot of things to like like hit us you know yeah. and it, it's uh it's nice but yeah man yeah yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of ups and downs. Yeah, I definitely take uh, wanting people to like, you know, it, there's there's that side which, you know, does have its its effect sometimes. I'm like, oh man, people are like, oh don't worry about it, like it's just trolls. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell myself <laughs> while yeah, I'm exactly. over here like. I'm going to get you. I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm going to win in this comment section. <laughs> like, one of my buddies. All the, pe- all the people you've never met in your life that are just yeah. sitting at home and like saying mean stuff. John Lalonde used to be like, dude, why are you even entertaining that guy? I'm like, because this is how I'm getting it out of my system. Cause he doesn't care. And I get to just go to town. I'm like, cause otherwise I'm going to take it out on someone else. <laughs> right right but, oh yeah, man. man anyway so that's funny yeah i'm like a 99i and like a 60 or 70d and then like pretty middle ground on the other two whatever but i don't know what that, i think an influencer or networker is the profile one of those two but yeah yeah anyway yeah so what's uh okay so <clears throat> we've got the podcast where you right talk all the time about awesomeness with people like me uh and you know other studs more studs and then uh mentorship more real estate Mm -hmm. what else is Mm. what else you got going on tell us what matt is working on now what's the thing yes yeah so well you mentioned you mentioned mentorship i did just launch that uh, an online course and it is actually all about the beginning of Basically, like if you have one to three properties, there's a pretty uh, easy way to use that experience to be able to leverage that experience to find a partner so that you can do what I did and almost use that cheat code to get more properties by working with a partner who's already done it. Mm. Um, And I don't think a lot of people use their one to three properties that they currently own 100 percent them as like i am experienced but you can use that as experience to get new new properties new partners to get yeah. properties so i have used that um that the platform that i'm building and that knowledge and expertise that i have in finding partners and the different partners i've worked with to create a course that basically helps course and mentorship it's a six-month mentorship that i'm doing right now and basically mentoring people on how do we leverage this experience that we have to go and find new partners how do we underwrite new partners how do we bring deals to partners pitch them on a deal and and get them into new properties so that has been a big focus that i'm doing right now it's called my scaling with partners mentorship um and then you know outside of that man actually one big thing that i'm looking at doing right now is buying a travel van um so i can just go take a trip uh, like a three-month trip i want to go out to colorado utah montana uh arizona i want to i want to see all the cool things out there man zion national park i want to go to moab um I, i looking for like a sprinter van ish type model with a bathroom and a shower and the bed and the kitchen and all that inside of it. But I'm looking below around $40,000 or under, which is a little bit harder to find. So you gotta go like, school. Um, dude, I'm, I oh, dude, the schoolies are awesome. I, and the miles per gallon on them are like three though. Yeah. There's someone selling one right now out here. Uh, it's almost finished. Like it's at the, like mm. the, LVPs in the stack washer dryers in the all the plumbing's mm. done the showers in the bathrooms in you just gotta like finish out the 
drywall and the, you know, like the right. walls for the bedroom and like the cabinetry right. and the like kitchen. And uh, he wants 20, uh, but the mileage is mm. good. And it's the 466 diesel. And he wants, right. he wants 20 grand. And I'm like, oh man, I have been kicking myself going back and forth about buying a schoolie to build out for a while. But then where I keep looking at is I'm like, dude, if I'm going to buy a bus, I, they, you can find, they're not as common, but you can find the double deckers. And I'm like, if I'm going to go the oh, bus route, man. I'm going to go the bus route. Like if I'm going to wow. get three miles a gallon, I'm going to go the two and a half mile a gallon route yeah. and show up in a double decker Greyhound and be like, that's my house, you know, but I love, I love the sprinter van or the like camper shell thing. Uh, right. I, I road trip. It's like a running joke with people. Like if I buy a plane ticket to show up at an event, people are like, you okay? Like, why did <laughs> you, you didn't drive? Like all, almost all my friends, like it's like, I, I drove to Tahoe from wow. Missouri. Wow. I have so far this year, I've driven to Tahoe, Austin twice, Dallas twice, Ta- you Tampa. I'm going to drive to Acadia later this year and then Orlando. Uh, I have a, this is actually my third of this. I've now had the sedan, the golf, and now I have the sport wagon. This is the, I drive a 2013 Jetta TDI, the diesel. Yeah. Fucking yep. love it. Dude, I get 37 dude, miles would, a gallon. You would make love with one of these buses if you bought one of these, I dude. Would. You would be like, oh, you probably wouldn't even end up back home, man. That's why I want to get, I want to get one with the with the wi-fi built in the satellite wi-fi mm. and i could just do my podcast from the bus and i could be doing my podcast wherever i want to do it from yep yeah you know? yeah you just cruise around do your thing i love it well if i if i That's if i get way. one i'll join you i'll just show up in colorado be like hey what's up dude, dude? let's do it man let's do it bro <laughs> schedule a trip I, I'm, I, I do love travel i do love travel and I mean that's well, not enough. That's not an expensive way to travel either. No, like no, it's not. Well, uh, two and a half uh, miles per gallon is slightly expensive, but but uh, until you get there, yeah, until you get there, yeah, then you then you enjoy yourself. You yeah. s- and you can camp up at any of those spots for however long you want. And, I mean, we say two and a half. I think the buses actually get closer to like twelve. Probably, yeah, probably ten. Yeah, it's 10 not it's not too terrible. The trucks that I drove in the Marine Corps get three and a half, and they weigh, they weigh forty thousand pounds, and they're six wheel drive, and they're not nearly as cool as the buses. So I think the buses right. are closer to like twelve. So right, yeah, could be worse. Anyway, <laughs> that's a whole. That's cool though. That's exciting. That's super exciting. Yeah, man, I love it. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking on the daily for those. I I do a lot of uh, shopping on Facebook Marketplace, looking for. Uh, Looking for my, it always recommends me every single day, like a new one that I, I see. And I'm always messaging guys, like guys have them up for like 80 grand. And just because of the wheeler and dealer that I am, like somebody will have it up for like 80 grand. I'll be like, yo, would you take 30 for mm-hmm. it? I could bring cash. I could bring cash today, bro. <laughs> but uh, who knows? Well, seller finance You never know until you try. Yeah, right. Seller finance it for 500 a month for 30 Six months. 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. All right. Yeah. So what have we what have we not covered that we should have? Man, I think uh I think it's been a great conversation. We've covered a lot. Um uh, I mean I I think if I was to hit on anything else, it would be some of the problems and and issues that I've come in on, and it has been not fully underwriting the people that I'm working with. Ooh. So whether that Tell be a more. partner, whether that be a partner, or whether that be a contractor, on the partner side, we want to have a dating period with our partner. We want to get to know the partner. We want to make sure that if they say they have capital, ask them to see their bank accounts. Mm. Um, I've had a lot of guys who have come to me who say they have money and we go, I find a deal that makes sense to buy and they get scared. 
when realistically, when you told me you had X amount of capital, this is nothing compared to that. So it shouldn't scare you at all. And I should have checked the bank accounts before because they were really uh, lying and, and pushing that for me. So with your partners, you want to make sure you see their experience. You know what their portfolio looks like. What have they done in those assets? Basically, you're like underwriting the person that you're working with. You want a dating period. You want to make sure that you line up ethically, morally. You're you're uh, you're going to get along with them. If you hung out with them for a weekend, you would be able to not hate yourself while you're with them. Um, and then on the contractor side, like. This was where I made my big mistake on my first renovation. It took a year and a half to get this thing complete and able to bring tenants in because I didn't underwrite my contractors. Mm. I wasn't staying on top of them. I wasn't in the units with them, making sure that everything was getting done that they were saying was getting done, making sure that they were on the job. And most of the time they weren't on the job, even when they said they were. Like they made themselves look and sound like they were getting stuff done, but they weren't. And I was not verifying. So I would just say, make sure we're underwriting our partners, our contractors, anybody that we're going to do business with, underwrite them as best as you can before you make the decision and fully commit to working with them. Yeah, that's solid. I think that's huge. And I've definitely had my share of contractors that I'm like, oh, yeah. You were great the first week or two. Cool. Yeah. When you showed up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were awesome at first. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was cool when you told me that you apparently had $10,000 worth of materials stolen off the job site and you expect me to buy it again, but you can't produce receipts. That was really right. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. That's no good. That happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't replace it or, or right. continue working with him. Um, right. So, you know, but <laughs> whatever, mm. had, had some fun stuff. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I also love the fact or the, the, the whole like, oh yeah, we'll be done this week. You know, that's yeah. Every, and you've been saying that every week for the past four months, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and there hasn't been any movement on the entire job. And I think that that's a, another thing too, is like, if somebody tells you something's going to get done and it doesn't get done the first time, Maybe I have a little bit of leniency, but then the second time when it re when it doesn't get done, that might be a fire time. And if it's not a fire time, three strikes, they need to be out. Yeah. If I the third time they tell you something's going to get done, it's not done. It's time for you to drop them, stop putting hope in them, and then just get somebody else on board that'll get it done. Cut your losses short, and because you're bound to lose. If they lie to you once, they're going to lie to you again. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, or they just even if they're not lying, they're just not not getting done what they should be getting done. They're not as good as I think, you know. And they're not. I'd they're rather not you workers. just tell me it's going to take four months, and then it takes four months, than you tell me what you think I want to hear. Especially because if I'm telling a private lender what you tell me, and even if I buffer twenty percent onto that, now I'm playing the like, yeah, man, I I really did think it was going to be done, you know, in two months, and he told me one and a half. I told you two. Now we're at three. I don't know. Right. Yeah. And that's that's another reason that you got to really underwrite like the people that you're working with, because what they tell you in their area of expertise is going to be what you relay to other people. And when I'm someone who keeps my word and I have my word, I, I'm, I'm a man of character. And what I say always happens. This is what gets done. What I say when I relay your word through my mouth to someone else and I put them out there as my word, and then you mess my word up, that's when we really have a problem, you know? Like, I don't, and that's why now when, if I have a, a broker, my real estate broker um, that I'm doing a deal with, and then my partners that I buy with, like, if they say, like, they've got the capital, get it done, they'll have the LOI in by the end of the day, right? I will, I will tell my broker, my partner says that they will have the LOI in by the end of the day. Yep. And I am, I am not the one that is saying that because, you know, yep. sometimes they don't deliver on that side and, and I need to make sure that when my word is out there, it's the truth. And that's something that's, that's going to get done. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I, I actually had an, uh, 
in probably the last week of February or early March, I had to essentially, I replaced a private lender with another private lender on a project because it became clear that we were not going to finish when I told him we were, and he had lined up a property that he was going to buy and needed the capital. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I was like, well, yeah, I told you we were going to be done. So I, you know, uh, interestingly enough, my parents had just come into an inheritance. And so I was like, Hey, perfect. Um, so I gave them a, what I would consider a much better return than I've probably given most. Uh, I mean, you know, unfortunately we've also gone past that timeline, Mm -hmm. but they're still going to, you know, it's still going to be worth their time. Uh, right. But it's been yeah, frustrating, but, uh, anyway, yeah, great, great point. Um, two last questions. The first being where can people get a hold of you? You can find me on any podcast platform at Financial Freedom Fast Podcast. And then you could find me on Instagram, Facebook at Matt Amabile, A M uh M A T T A M A B I L E. And then I got a really big one for you. Deep, yeah. deep thought, deep thought. Mm. Favorite yoga position. Whoa, that is, dude. Uh, but it's pigeon pose, man. <laughs> pigeon pose. So if you know what pigeon pose I is, I don't know much about. No. No, I don't know shit about yoga. Yeah, <laughs> I look it, like a dude, yoga guy. Well, I mean, I've done a little bit actually, dude. When when we see each other, we'll have to do a little bit of it. But all right, so wait. I'm and I'm just gonna throw this out there. You could cut this if you wanted to, but. I I'm a single dude and like I like fit athletic and down to earth women. So where can I go to find fit athletic down to earth women, dude? There you I, go. Can, I could go to yoga. But anyway, this this pose <laughs> like really flex. It it opens up the hips and like oh dude, my hips always used to give me so many problems and now it's like so so flexible, man. I do this pose every single day. There it's we just go. a stretch basically. But I'll, I'll give I love that some, question, some bro. Thank pose. you. <laughs> I, 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 I joke, but I've actually done a decent amount of yoga because I used to do uh, a, a lot of endurance sports, uh, you know, anything from Ragnar relays to uh, I've done two half Ironmans. And, uh, so in the attempt to avoid further knee injuries, right, I'd yoga and the book Supple Leopard was a lot of stretching and crap because I'm not built for endurance sports. I'm five, eight, two twenty five, and I'm built like a power lifter. So, uh, you know, running a half Ironmans is, uh, right. there's a reason I've had knee surgery. So, right. <laughs> but mm. Matt, it's good times, man. I appreciate you joining me and hanging out. Always a pleasure. I'll, uh, look forward to doing some yoga with you one of these days. Dude. Appreciate, appreciate you having me on brother. Absolutely. Always, always a good time. And, uh, hope you have a great day. You too, man. Peace. Make sure to get off the recording before this.